It's time for GGSP. I'm Will, and coming up on the show, Brad and I get to work in our review of the crazy puzzles of Good Job. And Jem gets her tongue in a twist in a let's play of Speaking Simulator. Open, touch the, touch the tongue to the roof. It's so slimy. Why is it so slimy? <laughs> Tongue twisters aren't really that hard, though. I mean, Peter Parker here to pick up a passport, please. Nailed it. On with the show. You know, Will, there's nothing quite like the satisfaction of a hard day's work. Well, Rad, I think I've got the game just for you. It's time for Good Job. Good Job is a puzzle game out on the Switch that has you completing small tasks while battling troublesome physics. Combine that with highly breakable objects and all of a sudden you've got a game full of silly antics. You need to make your way up nine levels of an office building, each with three to four rooms that have a different job that needs doing. But what starts off sounding like a simple task, such as hanging up some paintings, can easily turn into a disaster zone of broken, well, everything. It's easy to feel like the world is working against you. And once you've finished a level, it zooms out to show just how much destruction you caused. I'm sorry, poor worker people. Mm, while they say good job, I'm not sure they actually mean it. While this is a puzzle game, most of the challenge comes from grappling with the physics. Although there are some good puzzle moments. I felt the game was at its best when it was having you use angles to your advantage. But I also really liked levels where you had to clean up, or this one, where you're rolling a giant goo cube around. There's lots of different tasks and themed levels, making it refreshing and interesting, though I definitely liked some better than others. Oh yeah, the robot ones were the best. Painting lines to lead the little bots where they needed to go was so much fun. But there were way too many deliver the package levels for me. Collecting and moving stuff just wasn't fun because of how difficult it all is. And I didn't feel any satisfaction once I was done. Plus, there were just so many packages. I must say, I wasn't the most careful postman. In fact, the game is quite ironically named because you don't actually need to do a good job. You just have to complete your set task. Yeah, but job is a much less interesting game name. OK, job. Done job. Mm. Congratulations, you finished it, job. The idea is that you can carefully move things around to reach your goal, or take a slightly more ham-fisted approach. Mm, Rad, I'm just not much of a fan of getting ham on my fists, so I like to slowly work my way through the levels instead. Though some levels really made that difficult. Yeah, although they say you can play it carefully or with reckless abandon, it really feels like the game's intention is for you to destroy. Demolishing walls is much faster than going around, and you're likely to break things even if you're careful. Sometimes they straight up give you a wrecking ball. Plus, the penalty isn't very high for ruining everything. You do get rated on how well you did, with your time, how much you destroyed, and how much those items were worth being taken into account. But again, it doesn't really matter. The point is to just have fun. And it's a whole lot more fun when you play with a buddy. The game has two-player split-screen, and having that second person on hand makes the job faster and more efficient. Or if you're playing with Rad, it makes the job much more destructive. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm helping. Just break the wall! I, I wouldn't do that. Out of my way! Thankfully, even with all that, you can generally still get the job done, and the whole experience is so much more fun in multiplayer. Yeah, in fact, I think it's the only way to play. When solo, I found it very tedious and more frustrating than fun. But having a friend made for some good laughs. I agree. Though as charming as it is, I don't much crave that multiplayer experience, so it left me feeling pretty underwhelmed. Plus, the game would sometimes get quite janky, lose frames, and just flat out leave you stuck. So I'm giving Good Job two and a half out of five rubber chickens. Well, I love the art style, and I think it's a whole lot of fun if you have a player too. I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Good job. Good job. Oh, it's that time again. Scoop time. I'm quite enjoying my time here at the Scoop Desk, scooping up all the gaming news. I could get very comfortable here. 
very comfortable indeed. <laughs> now let's get stuck into it, shall we? First up, and after initially planning for an end of April launch, a new release date has been announced for Minecraft Dungeons. Mojang has now confirmed that Minecraft Dungeons will launch on the 26th of May this year. The developers say they hope it will be worth the wait. And so do we. I must say, I am excited to try out a new Minecraft dungeon crawling adventure. <laughs> oh, speaking of dungeon crawlers, just when we thought Pong couldn't get any better, a new Pong-related RPG has been announced. Pong Quest is a new take on the 1972 classic arcade game that played a crucial role in the history of gaming. In it, players go on a dungeon crawling adventure, solving puzzles inspired by Atari arcade classics, with role playing elements and a heavy helping of Pong paddle battling. I wonder if Lord Pongos knows about this. <laughs> now, I love to network. I'm talking hundreds of megabits per second networking. <laughs> and because of my high speed connections in the world of gaming, I'm always finding myself stumbling across rumors and goss. So I have an inside scoop to share. As 2020 marks the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers, some recently shared rumors suggest that remasters of much of the Super Mario Brothers back catalog are coming to the Nintendo Switch this year. So we may see the likes of Super Mario 64, Super Mario Galaxy, and other 3D Mario games re-rendered for our visual delight. There's also some chat about a new Paper Mario project of some sort for the Switch due out this year. Certainly some exciting prospects if these rumours turn out to be true. And now it's time for the Extra Scoop! <coughs> this week I marvelled at this loving recreation of The Legend of Zelda's Link to the Past map in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Vane Marnon created everything from Link's house to Lake Hylia and the Waterfall of Wishing. What a great utilization of Animal Crossing's terraforming features. Ah, and that's all for this week. Until we scoop again so long. Ah, are there any other well-known Australian robot newsreaders? Could I be the first? A pioneer? That's quite the responsibility, but I am up for the challenge. <laughs> Australia's favourite TV news reading robot. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'm so great. Have you ever been tongue tied? Well, Speaking Simulator is taking that to a whole other level. You play as an anxious robot who has to try and convince other humans that you too are human by forming very human words with your not so human tongue. Let's see how we do. The manager of human resources, Karen, has asked us to meet at this human food dispensary. It's possible they suspect we plan on destroying humanity. So I have to say hello, fellow human. So if I drop my jaw down, it opens my mouth. I then have to move my tongue up to these no. buttons and then move it in time with what it's telling me on the screen. So this is like puckering my lips to form words. Oh no, suspicious, raising too much suspicion. I'm talking too slowly. No. Lost a tooth, it's fine. Okay, we got through that. Adequate. I think you and I both know that I've noticed you at the office. There's something going on here. Nothing's going on, I'm just a normal person. Open, touch the touch the tongue to the roof. It's so slimy. Why is it so slimy? Go on. I think I'm saying words okay. Uh, Oop, I'm a normal, say normal, pucker the lips. Bring the, oh, I'm gonna lose a tooth. Norm. Down, Ball. up, try and sound like I'm not a, an android. Great, more conversation. Back in, it's tongue, up, up, currency, gotta form the consonants. Oh no, one of my eyes just blew out. No, I'm, I'm a totally normal human. Nothing to be suspicious of here. There's no way we're gonna fall her. Puck of the lips! <laughs> Is this what we look like when we talk? And ro ro and eligible leader. My guys, my tongue is stuck. 
close the mouth. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing okay so far. Let's take a look at the menu. Can we please stop talking? Query, are there any coolant fluids available? Query. As a, as a normal human, this is something I would totally say. A com... com... edic... edic... Joe. Joke! Close the mouth! <laughs> what a treat! Not only are you gorgeous, but you've got a sense of humour too! I'm gonna have fun with you, aren't I? Confirmed I'm a fun human! Con I actually have to, like, move my mouth. Fun. Like, it's not enough to just follow the arrows. You actually kind of have to predict. With like, you don't think about how your tongue is moving in your mouth, but I'm actively thinking about how my tongue is moving. Well, we did it! We got through the date! I've leveled up, so I didn't totally botch all my words. Upgrade station, what have we got? Open that mouth. Look at that tongue. Pull out the teeth, what? Express your innermost feelings as if they actually existed. Buy that? Okay. Display emotion. Gain system control of your eyes. Use them to look at things. Oh, that could be nifty. Okay. Oh, it's a job interview. Okay, here we go. Hello, super great to meet you in person. I've been reading your resume and I am beyond impressed. Okay. Oh no, I gotta look happy. Uh, greetings. Mm Mighty. Supreme. Oh no, I've kicked my tongue out. Oh no, I hope he doesn't realize. Okay, Supreme. My tongue is stuck. My tongue is stuck outside my face. Uh,. Too much eye contact, look away. I don't know how to look away. No, I'm supreme leader. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm flattered, yeah. but my name is Grant. Call me Grant. Not a problem, Grant. Look more normal. Gr Grant. Hit the, hit the button, hit the button. Ta my eyes twitching, I've lost another tooth. Oh wait, look happy. Oh, here we go, Grant. So I've got, oh, I've got to focus on my eyes as well as my tongue. I'm just a regular run-of-the-mill guy trying to get through this job interview without my eyeball exploding. No! I trust people who take care of their body. So if you're on board, we'd love to welcome you to the family. Good. Okay, first, look happy, pucker the lips, drop the tongue, back out. Oh, why is my tongue doing that? I've lost a tooth. How do you say words? More eye contact. Oh, this is so much stress. This is a two-person job for one face. Oh, no. Nah. So my rating is eccentric. Okay, so not creepy or my head just exploded, just eccentric. I can deal with that. It makes me wonder how our actual faces move. I think we found out that I would be a rubbish android trying to be a human. Overall, this is a lot of fun, but you really have to split your attention between moving the tongue and the eyes and looking happy or sad. So you'd almost need two people to work this. I don't know if that would be more chaos or less, but I had a lot of fun trying this out. Even if now, I think my own tongue hurts a bit. Ah, it's so roomy here at the Ask SP desk. I can stretch right out. Oh, actually, no, no, that's not comfortable at all. No, just the regular way is more than fine. Okay, how about some questions, though? And first up, a bundle of questions from Hermione Granger in Melbourne, but also Hogwarts. Hi, Good Game Spawn Point crew. Must say, big fan of your show. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions for me. One, do you recommend a Nintendo Switch or a Switch Lite? Two, do you have any recommendations for free iPad games? Three, do you recommend Pokemon Go and Minecraft Earth? Four, do you remember where Minecon 2014 was held? Whilst my worlds are loading, the screen displays fun facts, and one of them says that no one remembers where it was held. Five, do you recommend any Harry Potter games? Thanks for getting to my questions. Regards, Hermione Granger, Hogwarts. Thanks, Hermione Granger. To your first question about whether we would recommend the Switch or Switch Lite, well, I personally haven't used a Lite, only the original Switch, so I can't really make a personal recommendation of one over the other, but weighing up what we know about the features of each, it seems like it depends on if you want to play exclusively in handheld mode. If you don't ever see yourself wanting to dock with a TV, then the Switch Lite might be a smaller and more affordable way to play some Switch games though the regular Switch still is pretty portable and also quite versatile. It has the benefit of being able to detach Joy-Cons, which is great for local co-op or for using motion controls. And of course, it can dock with a television. 
So that's something for you and your grown-ups to weigh up together. To your question about free iPad game recommendations, I would suggest Crossy Road, The Plants vs Zombie Games, Bit City, Clash of Clans, or any of the Angry Birds series. Although, be wary of microtransactions in any free game. And there is a section of the App Store that highlights free games, so you could also have a look through those. As for whether I'd recommend Pokemon Go and Minecraft Earth, Pokemon Go can be a lot of fun, though I haven't played that in ages. We gave our thoughts about Minecraft Earth back when the initial beta was released last year, and to be honest, I haven't returned to it much since then. But I hear that there have been a lot of additions and improvements, like more mobs and bug fixes, so maybe I should take another look. It's worth mentioning that while typically these augmented reality games are all about getting out and about in the real world, both have recently announced that they will introduce new features to make them easier to play at home. Considering we're all encouraged to spend extra time at home at the moment, that seems like a pretty great idea. As for Minecon 2014, well, the story here is that Minecon 2014 was actually cancelled, or at least postponed to 2015 when it was then held in London. This was around the time that Minecraft was being acquired by Microsoft. So it's possible that some of this businessy stuff was part of the reason for the 2014 event not going ahead. Maybe the developers are having a bit of a joke there when they say that nobody remembers where it was held. Some classic Minecraft dev humor there. Now to your last question about Harry Potter game recommendations. Well, as a Lego fan, I would recommend the Lego Harry Potter collection. There are a bunch of other Harry Potter games out there, but in my opinion, the Lego ones are the most accessible and enjoyable. Oh, Wingardium Leviosa, that was a lot of questions. Now let's move on to another question, and this one comes from Murray in Morissette Park. How did King Boo get made? Thanks, Murray. That is a good question. How did King Boo get made? I sometimes wonder about that myself. But uh, let me give Darren here a little buzz and see if he knows. Greetings, Darren speaking. Hi, Darren. Will here with a question from Murray. How did King Boo get made? Well, I suppose one answer to that is that he was made by Nintendo developers. <laughs> but if you mean what is King Boo's backstory within the world or lore of the Mario games, well, here is what I know. King Boo first appeared in Luigi's Mansion as the main antagonist or bad guy. He's considered to be the leader or ruler of the other Boos and is also an ally of Bowser. King Boo has appeared in several other Mario games outside of the Luigi's Mansion series too, including Super Mario Sunshine, the Mario Party games, and as a playable character in some of the Mario Kart series. Now, there are some fan theories that suggest that King Boo may be a creation of Bowser Jr. Considering he appears to be made of goop in Super Mario Sunshine, and Bowser Jr. is responsible for most of the goopy creations in that game, using the magic paintbrush. In Paper Mario, it is also suggested that King Boo might have been a merchant before he was a Boo. But if you ask me, I think it's fitting that King Boo's true origins remain a haunting mystery. Ah, uh, you may be right about that one, Darren. Hey, before you go, I've got a joke for you. Oh, go ahead. My humor receptors are fully operational. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? King Boo. King Boo who? Oh, don't cry, Darren. It's only a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite amusing. Though I must remind you that I do not actually have lacrimal glands or tear ducts, nor do I produce any salty lipid-infused fluid from my eyeballs. So technically, I do not cry. But nevertheless, good one. <laughs> Talk soon. Bye-bye. OK, bye. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> OK, I think we have time for one more quick question from Colby. Will Sea of Thieves be coming to the Switch? Thanks, Colby. You know, I'm sorry to say, but I highly doubt Sea of Thieves will be coming to the Switch anytime soon. It's debatable whether or not the Switch system itself could technically handle a massive game like Sea of Thieves in its current state. But that aside, it's also exclusive to Xbox One and PC platforms at the moment. That may change one day, but it's fairly unlikely. I can't imagine it coming to the Switch for at least the foreseeable future. Or should I say, the foreseeable thievesable future? Eh? 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 All right, it looks like we're out of time for Ask SP this week. If you have a question for us, go here to send it in. And if it's a video that we use on the show, we'll find a way to send you some GGSP loot at some point. So ask your grown-ups to keep an eye on their emails. <laughs> 
the sea of thievesable future. It's kind of weird not having someone nearby to groan at my puns. Oh, maybe I'll keep a list of them and share them when we next chat. Yeah, uh, for sea of thievesable future, uh, ask SP, more like ask us me. <laughs> Well, that's it for now, but coming up next time on GGSP... Join us as we relive the full Apongalypse saga, meeting old friends and putting a stop to the evil Lord Pongos's plan to replace every game with Pong. You're the only ones that can save gaming. <laughs> <laughs> you call that a laser? Plus, make sure to check on the ABC Me app now for an extra snack-sized serve of GGSP, where Jem takes a look at the stories of ordinary people connected by fate in Half Past Fate. Until next time, Rat out. Will out. So, Rat, what are you doing with the rest of your weekend? Well, I have some leftover eggs, so I was thinking of hiding them around the house and then trying to forget about them, so I have a nice little surprise as I find them all year round. Oh, that's a fun idea, like little chocolate egg surprises to your future self. Who said anything about chocolate? Right, no, not real eggs. Right, that's a bad idea. Oh, it's all part of the surprise, Will. <sighs> Whatever you say, Rad. But uh, have you been hiding real eggs around the studio? Because something smells real <gasps> off. Surprise! <laughs> Are you going to eat that? Uh, no, you can have it. Thank you.